Now moving forward to have a look at this illustration. Here we can see a forest ecosystem, a land full of plants. Here comes the deer. Now the deer is feeding upon this lush green plants. Now the lion enters. The king of the jungle. Yes. And now he has grabbed the deer and finishes his meal. This completes a food chain. Here is the grassland ecosystem, a land full of grass. This grass is eaten up by the grasshopper. The grasshopper is eaten up by the frog. And this frog is eaten up by the snake. But the vulture is here. The vulture ultimately eats up the snake. And this completes a chain here. But one more chain is in there. And that's for pond ecosystem, where the hydrophytes are there. And on which hydrophytes, the small fishes are dependent on them. These small fishes are eaten up by the big fishes. That again completes a ecosystem, a pond ecosystem. But ma'am, why is this happening in nature? See, we know one concept, Jeev Jivasya Bhojnam, that one animal is the food for another animal. Nature has made an excellent arrangement for a stable environment. Yes ma'am, I have observed many deers in a forest nearby my place, where there are no lions. Is the absence of lion the reason behind the increased populations of deer? Yes, true. You got it right. This is the reason behind increased population of deers. Yes, ma'am. I have seen more incidences of dengue and malaria in newspapers these days. Is it because of the decline in population of frogs? Yes, because frogs are eating up the larvas of mosquitoes and flies. And now, as the population of the frogs is declining, the number of mosquitoes and flies is increasing that is ultimately leading to the diseases like dengue and malaria. Now you are conversant with our environment and the dependence of one component over the another. Each of this component forms a trophic level. Here plants as the producers are at the first trophic level. These plants are eaten up by the herbivores that are access primary consumers and form the secondary trophic level. These herbivores are eaten up by the carnivores that forms the secondary consumers and the third trophic level. Now, some higher carnivores can also become the part of the food chain and that can act upon the smaller carnivores and ultimately completes the food chain. In a food chain, the ultimate aim is to transfer the energy from the lower trophic level to the higher trophic level. Okay, have any one of you seen any video on TV regarding tigers and lions feeding on herbivores? Yes, ma'am, I have seen it. Okay, can you tell me why this happens? According to the energy flow diagram, the energy is maximum at the lower trophic level. And since herbivores are present at lower trophic levels, lions and tigers feed on them. Yes. Ma'am, according to this, if uh, energy is higher on lower trophic level, then why don't tigers directly eat plants? Yes, energy is higher at the lower trophic level. But tigers and lions, being carnivores, require more protein. Therefore, they feed upon the herbivores. And secondly, tigers and lions, being carnivores, they don't have the enzymes that are required for the digestion of cellulose that is present in the plants. Therefore, they can't directly feed upon the plants. When we talk about the energy flow, the green plants in an terrestrial ecosystem capture only 1% of the radiant solar energy for the food production. And being enormous in number, they occupy the greatest number at the lowest trophic level. These green plants are later eaten by the herbivores. So, most of the energy is lost as heat. Only 10% of the heat is utilized for their growth and reproduction. Later, this 10% can be taken as the average value for the energy transfer to the next trophic level. Since so little energy is available for the next level of consumers, food chains generally consist of only 3 or 4 steps. The loss of energy at each trophic level is so great that the little amount of usable energy is present after the four trophic level. What we see in the environment that one organism can be eaten by several organisms. So instead of a straight food chain, a branching of food chains is observed. That is what we call a food web. Ma'am, talking about the energy flow, does the energy captured by the autotroph revert back to the solar import? No that energy from the higher trophic level cannot be transferred to the lower trophic level since the flow of energy is unidirectional. Ma'am, I have heard that some harmful chemicals absorbed by the autotrophs progressively increase in higher trophic levels. Yes, you are correct. Certain fertilizers and pesticides absorbed by the plants gets accumulated to the next trophic level progressively. 
and this accumulation of pesticides and fertilizers to the higher trophic levels is known as biomagnification or biological magnification. We human beings occupy the top level of the food chain. So, this is very much sure that we are going to have few amount of residues, fertilizers or chemicals in our body since we are dependent on food grains or vegetables. Ma'am, are these biodegradable or non-biodegradable? Most of these chemicals are non-biodegradable. Ma'am, can these be removed by washing the food? No, these chemicals can't be removed by washing the food. Ma'am, then what is the solution for pesticide accumulation in our body? since most of the chemical pesticides are harmful for us. See, restricted and judicious use of chemical pesticides can reduce this biological magnification or we can opt for biodegradable pesticides and biological control of pests for our agricultural practices. Ma'am, what is biological control of pests? When these biological pests like insects and rodents are controlled by their natural predators like snakes or lizards, this type of control is known as biological control of pests. So that's all for today. Goodbye students.